Yes, you can. Free motion quilt on the Singer Fashion Mate 3342. You are going to need to purchase a free motion foot. It will be considered a low shank foot. And there's a couple things to know about this foot. We also want to set our stitch length to zero or use the cover plate to cover up the feed dog. So sometimes I use this, but sometimes I'll just set my stitch length to zero so the feed dogs, I have a little bit more room between the fabric and the foot. I'm going to go ahead and start with my tension to normal and my needle in the center needle position and make sure you're on a straight stitch. So next, you are going to actually remove not just the foot, but the entire white ankle. So take your screwdriver and begin to loosen the screw that's on the side, uh, on the left side. And we're gonna take that screw completely out of the foot. Next, you're gonna notice that on a free motion quilting foot, there's a little spring and an arm that usually sticks out. If you have one that looks slightly different, you'll still have some arm, and it, the arm needs to be positioned above the needle screw. So as I bring the foot into place, to put the screw back around, you'll see that the arm is above the needle screw. Use the screwdriver to get everything snug. You don't want that foot to wiggle loose at all. So here is a few things you need to know about free motion quilting. Number one, it's gonna take a little time and practice. So don't feel bad if you're not perfect on day one. It has, it has been a journey for me to become a free motion quilter. I do quilt all my own quilts now, but that wasn't the case years ago. So first off, a technique is to start off with is to hold your thread and take a complete stitch. And what you can do is you can actually bring the bobbin thread up to the top so you can actually hold on to it when you start to stitch. So oftentimes I'll have both my threads on the top of my fabric before I sew. The next thing you need to do is, and it's really hard to see that the foot is up, but you have to lower the presser foot down. Without that, you kind of have no tension, so that doesn't make the stitches look very good at all. Next, there is an art to running the machine, the speed, that your hands move. So for example, if you go very slow and move the fabric fast, you get long stitches. If you go really fast, but move your fabric really slow, you get little tiny stitches. So the goal is to find a happy medium. And once you do, you can start to create your own patterns. Now, before I get much further, I need to have you stop and peek on the back side. Because just because we see it pretty on the front, let's just see if we have it pretty on the back. Absolutely not. So these little kind of uh, spider webby things just means that we need to tighten up our top tension. So right now, things are a little on the loose side, so I'm gonna tighten up my, ne my needle thread I'm gonna take this tension actually quite a few numbers. I'm, normally it's at four. I'm gonna actually take it up to seven to really tighten up where those stitches are. So let's try it again. I'm not gonna bring the bobbin thread up, but I definitely am lowering the presser foot. And let's just take a little sample of our new tension and just see if that makes a difference. already look oh yes definitely looking better already so night and day so this is an example of when to adjust your tension based on how to balance your stitch so it looks just as good on the back as it does on the front